How are you doing brothers and sisters? Today I want to speak about um, um, how God created the earth, okay? Because if you don't really understand how God created the earth, then uh, what's going to happen with you is that you're going to be fooled and you're going to be confused and you're going to be thinking what exactly happened. Because when we read in the books and uh, when we read... Uh, what our syllabus in the schools tells us and uh, we look at the bible we get confused especially in the book of genesis the bible says one thing but the school says another thing so who is saying the truth and today i have a lot of information that i want to give you today and uh, i believe if you're going to watch this your eyes will be opened and uh, you'll be able to understand because the Bible tells us we need to edify one another. We need to open up one another and be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. All right. So without wasting much time, let me get down to what I'm speaking about. Now, this is the shape of the earth. I know this one uh, might shock many people, but this is how the earth looks like. The earth looks like this is very flat. All right. God created a flat earth. All right. He did not create a sphere earth like we hear from the schools. He created something flat. And uh, after he created this, uh, he put a dome above so no one can be able to go outside that dome. This is what we call the firmament. Okay, This is what we call the firmament. It looks exactly like that. And we have the ends of the earth. Okay, we have uh, this is the earth okay we have uh, different continents at the middle here here is the north pole okay <clears throat> and funny enough uh from the north pole to the firmament is uh, roughly about a hundred kilometers about 100 kilometers or 100 and something is not really far okay and uh these are the different continents that we have here and then this is the ocean okay this is the ocean and at the end of the ocean this is what we call the deep seas the deep seas at the end of the oceans we have a uh, frozen ice okay this is all frozen ice okay this frozen ice is uh, where what is called the ends of the earth the people of the world, they tend to say this is Antarctica. Yes, it's Antarctica. But Antarctica is not a continent. It's not a continent. Antarctica is basically, uh, what do we call? It's basically the ends of the earth. That's why they cannot allow anyone to go here. Why? Because they don't want people to know the truth and be able to come to understand that uh, the earth is uh, a flat because after this this uh, this uh, antarctica this ends of the earth we have a dome and this is a, a this is a sea of glass all right there is an ocean outside here okay there is a big ocean what you see on the skies is an ocean is an ocean what you see out in the skies when you look up high in your sky there is an ocean and i'm going to prove to you all these things using the bible in just a bit okay so now, when you go to the ends of the earth, here is a firmament. The firmament. Of course, towards the end here, we have mountains, of course, which go high up to maybe somewhere, uh, you know, like as high as Mount Everest, some, some kinds of mountains. Eh? And uh, all those, they come and they attach themselves to the dome. So up here, we have a dome. And we cannot get out of here. It is locked. We can't get out of here. It's locked. Because God wanted to protect us from the things outside, from the spiritual world outside. God separated the natural, the physical, from the spiritual. But uh, what the world is doing right now, they want to do as much as they can to get outside here, which is not possible. And uh, when we talk about the sun, moon, and the stars, they are they are here. You see, the firmament is divided into two. Look at this picture here. We have, this is the inner part of the firmament, okay? And then we have the outer part of the firmament, okay? Hope you can see my cursor. Now, inside the firmament is where we have the sun, moon, and the stars. The sun, moon, stars, and all those other things. They are just right here above the dome, okay? So nobody can be able to go to the moon. 
Nobody can be able to go to the sun. Nobody can be able to go to the stars because they are inside the firmament. And on top, outside that firmament is where uh, we have the heavenly, is where the, the, the third heaven is, okay? The third heaven, it's outside that firmament. That is the realm of God, okay? So nobody can be able to get out from here. Actually, nobody can get out from here. Just where the planes go. The planes are always going through this area. Okay? But above that, they can't. They can't. Okay? Now, if you look at the, at the earth from, uh, uh, from on top, okay? From the top, it looks something like this. Okay? You can see Antarctica all through like this. And then you can see the... Um, uh, the continents here and then you can see the the oceans okay the oceans and uh when we talk about uh, below 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 the earth it looks like this <clears throat> hell is below is below the earth this is also called sheol okay hell is there and uh the reason that uh, the people of the world and the 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 the, the, the satanists and the satan's agendas that the reason why they don't want to show you a flat earth is because they cannot be able to support evolution with a with a flat earth and you know evolution is just a lie from the pit of hell the only thing about evolution is basically to tell people that uh, god did not create us and they want to say that uh, uh, the, the, we were created or we came from some some big bang and then we evolved from monkeys no we are not we are not monkeys we are children of god and uh, they also want to hide the fact that hell exists okay that's something that they want to hide that hell exists and of course we know this one is uh, a lie from devil because the bible tells us that there is hell and there is a heaven you see, Paul was caught up unto the third heaven. This here on earth, this one, is called the first heaven. This one that you see. Because Jesus will come to rule here on, uh, on this earth. Okay, Jesus will come to rule on this earth for a thousand years. And uh, it's called the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Okay, it will be on this earth. And then after that, we, we see the Bible saying that uh, there is a heaven where the heaven leads, where the stars and the moon and the, and the sun are. This is the second heaven, all right? The second heaven. And then we have the third heaven. Remember the Apostle Paul was caught up unto the third heaven. Third heaven. This is the realm of God. So, having said that, I want us to go to a couple of verses and we can be able to uh, understand exactly how uh, the universe looks like, all right? We can be able to understand. Now, uh, when we go to uh, some verses here which I'm going to show you, we'll be able to understand that the Bible is true and every man a liar, all right? So, I, I've done something here which I wanted you to see. Of course, um, you can go to flatearthdoctrine.com whereby uh, you can be able to gain more information from there. And uh, just picking up from this, um, I'm going to show you that there are about 240 Bible verses which speak about geocentric, stationary, and flat earth universe model. All right? A geocentric is meaning from, from one point and the earth is, you know, the earth is like the main central point of the universe okay and uh there is not even one scripture when used in context which supports uh, does support a spherical earth or spherically shaped earth or an earth that spins or moves this earth that you see my friends it does not move it is fixed it is stable it is it has pillars down here that it cannot move all right so let me show you a couple of verses here okay there are about nine verses which say the earth does not move instead the earth is fixed stable and established all right and i'm going to show you this now let's go and check uh first chronicles uh 16 verse 30 
All right, let's come here. First Chronicles 1630. And I'll show you that the earth is stable. It does not move. See what the Bible says. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable that it be not moved. The earth is stable. It be not moved. All right. Have you understood that? Let's come to Psalms. Psalms 33, 9. Okay. Psalms 33, 9. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Are you seeing this? Who spoke? It is God. When he was creating the earth, he spoke by the power of his words. He spoke and it was done. He said, let there be earth. Let there be this. Let there be that. He commanded and it stood fast. It doesn't move. It is standing fast. All right. Let's go to Psalms 93 verse 1. Psalms 93 verse 1. All right. The Bible says, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he has girded himself. The world also is established. It cannot be moved. Are you seeing this one? The world is established. It cannot be moved. It can't move even one inch. So who is true here? Let God be true and every man be a liar. Psalms 96 verse 10. Okay, Psalms 96 verse 10. I'm going to show you many, many verses supporting this and telling us how the world is like according to how God made it. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established, that shall not be moved. You see, the Bible says that the world is established and it cannot be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Righteously will he judge the people. Because he says and it happens. He said that this world, let it be established and let it not be moved. Let's go again to Psalms, um, Psalms 104 verse 5. Okay. Uh, Psalms 104 verse 5. Who laid the foundations of the earth that should not be removed forever? The earth has foundations. It is put on, some, on pillars. It cannot be removed forever. Alright. Let's keep on checking. Uh, Psalms 89. Alright. Psalms 119, sorry, but, uh, verse 89. It said, Lamed forever, O Lord, thy word, is, uh, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generation. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. What does abiding mean? The Bible says, abide in me. I will also abide in you. Stick with me. Abide with me. So it means the earth, is, it has uh, abided. It is. It has abideth, you see? Basically meaning it has stood and it is not moving. All right. The book of Isaiah 14 verse 7. Isaiah 14 verse 7. Let's see. The whole earth is at rest. It is quiet. They break forth into singing. Are you seeing this one? The whole earth is at rest. Now, something which is at rest, is it moving? No. It is quiet. Okay, let's keep on checking. Isaiah 45, 18. Okay. Isaiah 45, 18. It says, For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. You see, he has established it. It is established. It cannot move. Are you seeing this one? Okay. Zechariah. Zechariah 1 verse 11. 
Zechariah 1 verse 11. Let's see. Okay. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Are you seeing this one? The earth sitteth still and is at rest. It has stood and is not moving, is not going anywhere. Does this tell you about the earth? Are you getting the point here? All right. Now, let me come to something else here. Now, when you, when you, when you understand according to what, uh, how God created the earth, we can be able to understand that the world is just basically against God. It basically just wants to go against the word of God and to say that God is a liar and they are true. Now, between God, the creator, and the human beings, who is wise? You definitely know who is wise. The wisdom of God is true. And uh, let me continue reading. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of specific proofs that disapprove the spinning sphere-shaped earth and prove the stationary and flat earth. Here are just a few indisputable flat earth proofs, as we see in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 21. Let's go to that verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. Let's see what it says. All right? It's always good to, to go deeper and to understand the doctrine all right the bible t t tells us one thing that we should prove all things are you seeing this one prove all things hold fast that which is good now people in the church today they don't want to prove things they just want to say oh but you see but you see but you see this and that they don't want to prove the things of god they just want to make arguments and say oh we were taught this but do you prove now, I want, before even I go to that, uh, uh, the, 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 before I continue here, I want to prove to you and show you exactly how the ends of the earth looks like. You may be asking, Keith, but uh, you're saying the ends of the earth, how does this Antarctica, this ends of the earth, how does it really look? Is, is there anyone who has ever been there? Now, let me tell you, first and foremost, you have to understand it is only very few people who can be allowed there because there is something called the Antarctica Treaty, which was signed uh, Antarctica uh, Treaty. Okay, it was signed. I think sometime. Uh, when was it? When was it? When was it? When was it? In nineteen uh, nineteen what? Nineteen fifty nine. And uh, the Antarctic Treaty and related agreements collectively known as the Antarctic Treaty System regulate international relations with uh, respect to Antarctica. Earth's only continent without a native human population. Read that. Why did they make a treaty? Why did they say that nobody should be able to go there? And of course they try to uh, uh, draw a very fake map here and try to tell us all oh, this is how it looks like but we know it doesn't look like that why did they make this treaty why did they make this treaty is to so that they can they, they can make sure nobody can be able to go there so that they can say nobody is allowed there for what reason because they want to hide the truth because when people understand the truth, the truth will set them free. And uh, you, you can see the same old suspects, the same old suspects as we know. What is so big in this Antarctica that they are saying that nobody can be able to go there? How comes they have not uh, made treaty about the North Pole? Why have they not made a treaty for the North Pole and said nobody should go to the North Pole? Why South Pole? Because there's something that they are hiding. And, is, and, is, uh, and nobody is able to go there. And they say, no, 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 no. We can't allow anyone to go there. We cannot allow anyone to go there. Why? 
they are trying to say oh waste management marine pollution protected areas you see we need to protect the environment and all these kind of things which is good to protect things but my friends we need to be wise we need to be wise as serpents wise as serpents okay now let me show you something guys let me show you there's a video here i i i i prepared a little bit and i wanted to show you exactly how the ends of the earth looks like now this uh these are uh, this, this someone who went there of course there are people who have been there uh who have been allowed to go there of course uh under it's you pay about fifty thousand us dollars only for a trip to go there you see how much expensive it is you cannot even go there only specific people can be allowed to go there who are under very great supervision and they say oh because we want to protect it and all that so of course definitely because some people have gone there we have videos showing us how exactly it looks like okay it looks like this okay this is a, a guy called uh, truth in plain sight vika does vive he's been able to compile this so that he can be able to show us exactly how it looks like i've removed uh, the volume because i i, I don't want uh, copyright issues but uh, i just want us to look he's given us a verse here job 26 talking about god marking the limit on the surface of the surrounding waters to the ends of the light and the darkness all right so now i want us to begin and we'll be able to see how exactly does that place look like and why is it that people have been denied what is that main thing that they are telling people you cannot go there look at that wall of ice look at it are you seeing this are you seeing this when god said that uh, let the waters be gathered together and it happened i'm going to read to you all these things this is exactly how it looks like the ends of the earth and of course when you look here towards the end of course these people are not allowed to go to these ends they try to say oh you see but uh, you cannot really go very far because uh, you know uh, environment and blah 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 all those kind of things that they try to say uh, and we know we know that's that's not true we know that's not true it's just because they don't want people to see and people to understand these these are guys on on a plane all right or i think a helicopter and 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 they and they are trying to show people exactly how that place looks like you see exactly just like the bible said it to be are you getting the picture here now what's so different what's so huge with this place that people cannot be allowed to go and see are there some plants are there some things that uh, maybe we need to know uh, maybe we need to protect so much are there some animals or something you see the bible tells us to prove all things we should prove all things we should be as wise as a serpent are you seeing the point here be wise my friends wake up wake up and this all this story is created so that they can support evolution and just say that you're a monkey my friends are you really a monkey are you a monkey on a spinning ball or are you a, a, a created human being someone created by god are you created by god or are you just any other guy out there look at that wall exactly the way the bible said exactly this is ice in these places the sun doesn't really uh, reach these sides and i'm going to show you and tell you how the sun moves all right i hope i'll get time to 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 to, to be able to explain that so are you seeing this so it's really really important for us to open our eyes the bible tells us do not be ignorant of the devil's devices this all wall is going all through all through all through all through round the earth 
And unless you understand this and you open up your eyes, you'll be fooled. You will be fooled, my friends. Are you seeing this one? You see? Is there any animal that you've seen here that is uh, supposed to be protected? Which animal is here? Nothing. Totally, absolutely nothing. All right? This helicopter stopped here. Uh, what, what has it destroyed? Nothing. Why don't they want people to go and do independent explorations there? You can see? You can see? You can see? Can you see the firmament from here? Can you see the firmament, my friends? Are you seeing the firmament? Are you seeing it? This is this is the firmament. This is a dome. All right, here. Can you see it? The ends of the earth. Let God be true and every man be a liar. Let's open up our eyes. Let's be wise. Let's be wise. You see, Christianity is not, uh, is not all about ignorance, like the, the way people try to say. People try to say, oh, it's ignorance, this. No, we are not ignorant. We are wise. We are wise, my friends. And I've put these videos together so that we can be able to learn and understand. Because I want us to look at the Bible, at the way God intended it to be. All right, have you seen? You see there are some mountains here. Okay. So now, having said that, <clears throat> let's come back here. All right. Let's look at uh, the water levels. Okay. We understand that water always six level. Water always six level. Water cannot be proven to stick to a ball. It does not stick to a ball, much less a spinning ball. How can, how can you talk about the oceans? They are sticking on a ball which is spinning. <laughs> you know, yes, they say gravity. What is gravity? If, if, uh, if water can really stick on a spinning ball, then, then I don't think we could even pour water from a glass. Because you see gravity and all those. I, I don't really understand these people. Since water always seeks its level, how is it possible that water can be sticking to a spherically shaped earth? How is it possible? Let's look at uh, the level horizon. Okay, The horizon is always at an eye level and horizontal what we call flat, no matter the altitude, whether, uh, whether balloons have been sent up 20 miles above the face of the earth and footage captured testifies to these realities. Okay, number three, aircraft never accounts for motions of the earth. Air, uh, airplanes and helicopters and drones never have to account for the alleged motion of the earth. Hence, the earth is stationary and fixed. Think about helicopters when they are just high above the, 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 the earth. It would mean that when helicopters go up high in the sky, then uh, when they are landing, if they, they, they took off from Africa, they land in Canada. You see, is this making sense to you? Let's talk about rail truck, uh, uh, rail roads, sorry. Railroad track and bridges. Whenever railroad track is laid or a bridge is constructed, never do the blueprints suggest or even hint that the alleged curvature of the earth should be considered, including when built over the water. They just build on a straight line. Look at this. Think about this bridge, all right? This bridge uh, is the world's longest bridge opened in June 2011 which spans about 102.4 miles, that's 165 kilometers. And the land surveyors and engineers confirmed that no curvature of the earth was accounted during the construction. Is it making some sense? This is the Dian Kushan Grand Bridge in China. Very long. Now, did they calculate the curvature? 
you know the bending this what they try to say this bending did they calculate it when they were making this are you seeing the points here now let's talk about the airplanes and submarines uh-huh never does an airplane or submarine have to account for an alleged curvature of the earth during their navigation if the earth had curvature then an adjustment of eight inches per mile squared spherical trigonometry must be taken into account during navigation of both an airplane and submarine however never are adjustments made for the curvature are you doing this are you are you seeing these facts because people try to say that oh christians are fools no we're not fools we're not fools my friends we need to open up our eyes and read the bible as it is and understand things as they are the bible says seek knowledge even if it's all that you have seek knowledge seek wisdom let's talk about gravity you know <laughs> what they try to say pulls the earth together now gravity has never been proven nobody has been able to prove uh, gravity even albert Einstein, he, he just sat down and uh, he said okay uh, he tried to prove gravity but he could not be able to get the clear points of it however what has been proven is density and buoyancy density and buoyancy are the natural regulators god has put into place that dictates what rises and what falls based on the mediums the object is within now look at this example here okay now depending on uh, whatever is has much weight it will go up and what has lesser weight will go down think about a bolt this is uh, some metal it will go down because of the weight look at honey it will go down corn syrup popcorn kernel maple syrup uh, uh, dye maybe some some dye of something the, the one that you used to dye clothes milk dish soap cherry tomato water beads vegetable oil soda rubbing alcohol lamb oil ping pong ball and even if you just take um, a balloon and put some air in a balloon it goes up why because the density of the air in that balloon is lesser than the, than the density of the air which is inside the balloon but if you put equal levels a uh, half half you 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 put some oxygen and you put in helium that balloon will not will, will not go up or down it will float why because of the density are you seeing the point here all right let's continue the heliocentric universe model is from a man not god nasa has lied about our cosmo uh, our cosmology to discredit and invalidate god's word in a world where people believe they were created from an ape and they don't know what gender they are the correct account of creation from the bible is more relevant than ever let god be true but every man a liar now let me show you a couple of things that uh, this uh, you know this this nasa has been trying to say and see if all these things don't point to something satanic let me show you this think about this we have about 33 examples of uh, 666 which is we know is the number of uh, the fallen nature of man or the number of the beast in modern science and globe model now i'll do on a countdown okay from 33 to number one look at this they say that the earth axis its orbit inclination around the sun around 66.6 .6 degrees hmm is it making some sense do you see some weird number here they also say that the earth orbits the sun at 66,600 miles per hour something weird again mm -hmm. the earth circumference is 600 times 6 times 6 nautical miles mm -hmm. adding making some sense here the speed of sound is 666 knots per sound per second are you are you are you awake yet 
the force of gravity on the earth is 666 new newtons i don't know if you're still awake or you're asleep the curvature of a square mile is 0.666 feet in 10 miles and 66.6 feet in 20 miles and 266 to 266.6 feet in 40 miles i believe and uh 1066.6 feet in 50 miles and 1666 feet 70 miles 3266 uh, 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 3266.6 feet 80 miles you see all these 66666 is is it really making some sense to you are you still asleep the world is just again as god they don't want anything to do with God. That's why they, they, they are raising the God of this world, who is Satan. The Arctic and Antarctic circles are exactly 66.6. Why all the sixes? What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Astro, not Peggy, Winston spent about 666 days in space. Mm. Whoever they call that guy. The distance to the moon is 6 times 60 times 666 miles. The diameter of the moon is 6 times 6 times 60 miles. Sunset is divided 3 degrees. 6 degrees. 6 degrees. 6 degrees. <laughs> From Mercury, the sun is 666 times brighter using the in inverse square law. The Venus is 464 Celsius or 867 degrees Fahrenheit. The median of these two numbers is 666. I want, I want us, we wake up, brothers and sisters. We are, we are not supposed to, to sleep. Venus, look at this. Okay, that's what I just told you. Mass is 1.666 AU, astronomical units from the sun at Aphelion. Ceres classifies dwarf planet in the asteroid belt whatever it is eh, has four sixes you see all this I, I don't want to take much time on these sixes eh, but you can see you can see you can see all this you can see you can see this all right you can see all this the speed of light mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you see can you see these numbers can you see some weird numbers here can you see these numbers and tell me if all this is it has anything to glorify God. Huh? What is it there to glorify God? What's there to glorify God here? I don't know if guys we are awake. We need to be awake. These are the last days. And Satan is so much working tirelessly because he knows his time is short. And he needs to fool everyone. He needs to fool everyone. Fool as many people as possible, all right? So that they cannot believe the gospel. And all they can think about is that you are a monkey on a spinning ball. Are you really a monkey? Did you just drop from uh, from some collisions, collisions of uh, some, some big bang? Or did God create you? God is saying that he knew you from your mother's womb. Even before you knew yourself, he already knew you. And... Uh, it's a high time that we wake up, you know, all these things, all these things. Does it really make some sense? Are you getting the point here? <laughs> this is how the earth looks like. My friends, let's wake up. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. And all these, all these, uh, whoever tries to say, oh, the, the earth looks like this, is, is seen to be a fool. People say, ah, you're a fool. <laughs> Keith, you're a fool. It's okay. Have nothing to glory in except God. All right? Are you seeing this? Are you seeing all this? Now, let's, let's go back here and uh, do a little bit more study. Because I want now to show you, all right? I want to show you uh, verses, okay? Verses which 
proof that the Bible, uh, the Bible is really true when it talks about the aspect of creation. All right, the Bible tells us in the book of John three twelve that I, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? You see, people don't believe what the Bible is saying. They believe another thing. They say, oh, uh, you see, I, 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 I'll believe what I was taught in school. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead and believe what you were taught in school. But uh, you see, there is the wisdom of the world and there is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of the world is basically what we see, the, the, the artificial intelligence, the artificial knowledge. That's why it's called artificial. Because there's the natural knowledge which is from God. Why are they pushing so much the artificial knowledge instead of the natural knowledge of God? Because the natural knowledge of God is truth. Alright. Having said that, now let's come to the verses here. Alright, this is going to be a great teaching. Guys, we're, we're not even yet done. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even try to move from where you are. I hope you're in a comfortable seat and uh, you're relaxed because this is going to be great. And uh, I like to tell you, if, if, if you can, please take time and just go through what we're going to learn today because there's a lot, a lot, a lot which tells us about what God has done. Now, let's look at... Uh, what the Bible says in Genesis 1, 1 to 19. The Bible says that the earth was created before the sun. So for these people, they try to say that uh, the sun is the center of everything. Now, I want to show you exactly what God did during creation. And you will see that it's a very different story from what you learned in school. Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Where is the sun? There's no sun. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, I want you to see this. I, I want to, every, these verses I'll show you and I try to explain as much as I can. The earth was without form. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light you see light is not Sun you see God will create the Sun later on the light you see there is the natural light of God you see the Bible tells us that uh, in the new heaven and the new earth there will be there will be no Sun because God himself, he will, he will give light that time. So there is the natural light of God. Because where there is no God, there is no light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God, and a God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. What is a firmament? What is a firmament? A firmament is basically a space. All right? A firmament. Let me show you what a firmament is. It is a space between, you see, extended surface, solid, expanse, firmament, Flat as base. You see? From the down here, there is a flat base and then there is a space and then there is a firmament. So this is basically what God created. This space inside is what we call the firmament. Let's keep on checking. Firmament or vault of heaven supporting waters above. Firmament supporting waters above. Just like I told you, up here there is water. Because when God created the heaven and the earth, it was all, there was just, there was nothing. It was void. There was nothing. It was just all water all through. And then God now started separating things. The first thing that is done is making this space inside. Alright? 
considered by Hebrews as solid and supporting waters above the firmament. Making some sense? Okay. Let's let's go on. Let's go on. Uh -huh. Verse 7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Now look at this. There are some key words here you need to understand. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. So there are some waters under the firmament. You see? There are waters here under this firmament. From the waters which are above the firmament. You see, I'm not talking about inside here, the earth. I'm talking about all these waters which are below. Below the earth, there is a lot of water. And above the earth, there is a lot of water. Alright? So, that's what God divided. The waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing this one? Now, this is a heaven. This one here. This firmament. He called it heaven. This is a second heaven. This one. All right. Because uh, you will understand that the first heaven is the earth. Okay. This is where God will rule. Jesus will rule in the kingdom of heaven. That kingdom of heaven will be here on earth. So this is the first heaven. The second heaven. And of course, we know the realm of God is the third heaven. Where Paul was caught up, all right? God made the heavens, all right? Uh, God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven. Now, we're talking about the heaven firmament, this one, okay? All right? Now, God said, now let's hear what he says about the waters down here the ones which are under this heaven let's see what he says and god said uh let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was are you seeing this one so god said let these waters which are below here under the heaven gather together you see so if they gather together then it means they'll be there will be some dry area here. But it's not land. It's not land. This is ice. This is ice. That's where Antarctica came in to be. And the God said, let them be gathered together. And let the dry land appear. Dry land appeared here inside that, those waters. Are you seeing the point here? Inside these waters, dry land appeared. In these gathered waters. That's why all around this we have this dry ice. Are you seeing the works of God? And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. Do you hear about the seas? And God saw that it was good. And this is what we, we call the seas. The oceans here. The seas. And this is the high seas outside here. Is the high seas and this is the shallow seas towards where the dry land is making some sense all right and God say let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit uh, tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so so after that God uh, decided okay let everything you know, uh, make fruit. And the earth brought forth grass and a herb yielding seed after its kind and a tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be light. Now, here comes the sun. <laughs> are, you, are you seeing the point here? Now, we are heading towards when now the sun will be created. You see, everything is centered on the earth. It's not centered on the sun. And God said, let there be light in, you see, in, in the firmament. Not out of space, but in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, you see. These lights are for what? For signs and for seasons and for days and for years. 
this light. Inside this firmament, we have the sun, the moon, and the stars, the lights for signs and seasons and for years. All right? When the, when the sun is moving, it moves like this. Okay? It moves in a spiral way. Okay? It, it's, I wish I had a way that I can show you. you. Oh, let me show you here. Okay, let's assume this is a, this is the North Pole here. Okay? So the sun will move like this. Okay? It moves in a spiral way. A spiral way okay up to here not really at the uh, 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 towards the firmament up to here and then it moves again back and then it moves again away then it moves again near it moves away it moves near and things like that that's how exactly it moves and that's how seasons are created because when the Sun is towards here in these places in these places we have uh, lesser uh, what do we call it? We have lesser, uh, we have different seasons. Some places are winter, others are not. But you see, like, for example, in Africa, the sun is always towards here, the middle. So we always experience uh, almost 24-7 summer. But think about when the sun is here, places which are like South America, I don't know which countries are these. Anyway, I'm not really good in geography, but you can understand these places will be winter. And when the sun is out here, these places will be winter as well. Alright? When the sun is here, this place is winter. When the sun is this side, this place is, is, uh, is winter. It's the opposite. When the sun is here, it's summer. When it's out of here, it's winter. You see how? And of course, the moon is also going around as well. And the stars, they're also moving around. And when they, when we see those eclipses and things like that, those are signs. God set these things to move for signs, different signs, all right? All right. Uh -huh. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. You see, two great lights, the sun and the moon. The sun to rule the day and the moon. To rule the night and he made the stars also is that like god is saying i'm just throwing the stars there also to to add you know to beautify the place and god set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth where did god set all those lights in the firmament in the firmament to give light upon the earth you see everything is centered upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Are you seeing the point? So, having talked about that, you understand that earth was created before the sun. The earth was created before the sun. Are you getting the point? And when you look at uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 1, it tells us that the earth universe is complete. Is never expanding. It is complete. For people who say uh, that uh, you see that uh, 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 things are, they are still, this earth is still, you know, is still adding. You see some people, some things are still evolving. There's nothing which is evolving. Evolution is just uh, 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 from Satan. Look at what the Bible says. Thus the heaven and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. So there's nothing which is still going on. There's no more evolving. There's no more creation. It is finished. It is done. It's over. Okay? Now, the earth has pillars. And it hangs on nothing. Alright? The Bible says that the earth has pillars. And it hangs on nothing. Okay? We have pillars. Pillars. But it hangs on nothing. That's how powerful God is. This world is hanging on nothing. Can you, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Alright. Let me show you this. Let's uh, go to 1 Samuel 2.8. It's always good to confirm the words. So that uh, you may not say, Oh, but you see, but you see. This is to make sure you understand the truth. 1 Samuel 2.8. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among 
princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars, look at this, the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Are you seeing this one? The pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. You see, God has set the whole world upon the pillars. And these pillars hang on nothing. That's how powerful God is. These pillars, they hang on nothing. Let's see also Job 9.6. Job 9.6. Right? Which shaketh the earth out of our place, and the pillars thereof tremble. You see, God is the only one who can shake the earth out of our place. And the pillars can tremble because it's that powerful. He can command the sun and it rises north and sealeth up the stars. You see, God is really powerful. Okay, let's keep on checking. Job 26 verse 7. He stretches out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. The earth is hanging upon nothing, absolutely nothing. You cannot say the earth is hanging on what? No, we are hanging on nothing. It's not hanging on the pool of uh, the sun. You see people, uh, the evolutionists, they, they will say, oh, the earth is hanging on the, you know, the, the gravity of the, of the sun. No, 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 no. It is God. That is the one that they are denying. That's the one that they are denying. They want to say that so that you cannot believe in God. But the Bible tells us otherwise. Who are you going to believe? The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars. The pillars of it. Getting some sense? Are you are you walk still? Are you sleeping or are you walk? Now, the earth has four corners and four quarters. Four corners. The earth has Four corners and four quarters. When you look at this, there is this corner, there is this, there is this, and there is this side. All right? You can you can have the four corners of the earth. Okay? All right? Yes, I know it's on a circle way, but it has different corners. If if an angel stands here, an angel stands here, an angel stands here, and another one stands here, they're already in the four corners of the earth. Are you getting the point? Now let me show you. In the book of Isaiah 11 verse 12, it tells us, Isaiah 11 verse 12, it says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the disp dispersed of Judah from the four corners of of the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Four corners of what? The earth. Ezekiel 7-2. Ezekiel 7-2. The Bible says, Also thou son of man, says the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Are you seeing how God is powerful in this? He knows exactly. And uh, this Bible was written even before science came. Science is just born the other day with these uh, fake, fake gurus. How did God know all these things? He's a powerful God. If this one doesn't make you to get saved, then uh, I don't know what will. Because this is a proof that God is real and God is true. Ecclesiastes 1.6 This is a proof to tell you that God is really true. And if all these things which are written, they are really true the way they are, think about the things in heaven. The wind goes towards the south and turneth about unto the north, all right? And it wheeleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. You see what God is saying? This is science. The wind goes towards the south and turneth about and to the north, and it wheeleth around continually, and the wind returneth again unto his circuits. Are 
Are you seeing this one? The wind is going like this. From this high ends here, because uh, uh, for those who have uh, gone to the to the ends of the earth in Antarctica, they say that uh, in Antarctica there's a lot of wind, a lot of wind and cold air there. And of course, this wind is also pushed much by this uh, high seas here. So the wind comes to this place and goes back and, you know, like this, like this, like this. Is it making some sense? Revelation 7.1 Revelation 7.1 Right, let's see. The Bible says, After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Hmm, hmm. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding four winds. My friends, is this, this not making some sense? That the wind should not blow on the earth. This is towards the end times. How it's going to be. Satan doesn't want you to know these things because he wants you to be caught unawares. He wants you to be caught unawares. But uh, the good thing about today's modern Christianity the gospel of grace is that we are not fools. We are waking up and people are doing research. Christians are doing research. Gone are the days when Christians were ignorant people. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. You see, the earth has four quarters. Gog and Magog to gather them together to the battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. This is during the Gog and Magog war. Are you seeing this one? Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, we have to see something else. That uh, Do you know that the sun moves backwards? <laughs> Making some sense? The sun moves backwards? And uh, not even... <laughs> do you remember the story of... Uh... Okay, let me, let me just show you. I... I... Let, let me explain as we continue, okay? Let me show you the verses. It's really, this is a very wonderful study. It's a very wonderful study, okay? This is what we call a Bible study. Look at this. We'll read to 11. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? Mm -hmm. Hezekiah is asking, and Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken, and that the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees. What, what shadow is going back? So if the shadow is going back, it means the sun is moving back. I don't know if you're getting the point here. And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down. 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it has gone down in the deal of Hahaz. You see? Are you seeing that uh, the sun moved backwards? Do you even remember when uh, when Joshua was praying, and he prayed and prayed and said, God, please stop holding the sun there until we finish fighting our enemies. And the sun stopped. The sun stopped. It did not set until they finished fighting their enemies. Making some sense now? All right. Now, let's see something else here. Moon has his own light. You see, God is has his own wisdom. Forget the artificial wisdom of Satan. The artificial wisdom, which they call intelligence of Satan. No. God's wisdom is true and perfect. If you need to know anything about the universe, just ask God. Just read your Bible. The moon has his own light. 
Okay? The moon has its own light. Remember in Genesis 1, 6, 1, 16, what we read? Let me remind you. Genesis 1, 16. See what the Bible says. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So, are you seeing something here? The greater light to rule the day. So, that's a light on its own, an independent light. And the lesser light, moon has his, her own light or his own light, whatever you may call. I don't want to start putting genders here. The moon has his own light. Is it making some sense here? So, this scientists they say oh the moon has no light it only reflects the light from the sun and blah 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 and reflects no moon has its own light the book of isaiah 3 13 verse 10 i know this is tiring but uh you rather pause come back <laughs> because this one i'm not going to stop i have to make sure that i show you clearly so that you can understand what the Bible says. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. You see what does the Bible say here? Towards those days, the end of days. The stars of heaven and the constellations shall not give their light. Meaning they have their own independent light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. You see, the moon has her light. She does not reflect. She has her light. Isaiah 30 verse 26. Isaiah 30 26. Okay. Let's check. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. The light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. As the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of the wound. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Making some sense? Let's keep on checking. Let's keep on checking. Don't be tired, my friends. Don't be tired. Don't be wary of the things of God. You can watch a three-hour movie, but... Uh, if we talk to the, about the things of God, it, it becomes hard. Why? Let's just, let's just learn. Let's learn. Let's learn together. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for the brightness shall the moon, the moon give her light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God, thy glory. Are you seeing this talking about the millennial time? When we'll be with Jesus. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. No, the light now will be of Jesus. You remember in Genesis where the Bible says, And God created light. God said, sorry, God said, let there be light. Light is what? Himself, he has the light. If this sun is darkened, you think you will even see anything? Ooh, I mean, if the light of uh, God is darkened, most of the light that you see is the light of God, not even the sun. The sun, uh, it will just show some light. Yes, it's true. But if God said, let there be darkness, my friends, you will even feel darkness. Darkness will be even, you, you will even almost touch darkness because <laughs> this, that is God who created things like that. Okay, Jeremiah 31, 35. Jeremiah 31, 35. Thus says the Lord which giveth the sun for a, for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon, and the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Making some sense? The sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon. Okay? The moon and the stars for a light by night. You see, the moon, light by night. Matthew 24, 29. Oh, I enjoy this. I'm really enjoying this. Hope you are. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light because she has 
a light, the moon has a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be darkened. That's what will happen that time. It's also repeated here in the book of Mark 13, verse 24. Mark 13, 24. It also tells us about the same. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. You see, a repetition of the same. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 32 verse 7. Ezekiel 32 verse 7. And when I shall, uh, I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her light. Okay, Revelation 21, 23. Revelation 21, 23. What does it say? It says, and the city had no need of the sun. This is the millennial, I mean, this is the, 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 the new city, okay? The new Jerusalem. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God, you see, God said, let there be light. The glory of God did lighten it. And the lamb is the light thereof. Who is that lamb? The lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is that light. Forget the light of Lucifer. No, Jesus is that light. Satan is just a, a faker. He's trying to fake what God has created. All right. Have you understood that? Now, uh, let's look at uh, the earth measurements, okay? Earth measurements, the unknown earth measurements, okay? For those people who try to say that, oh, this is the measurements of the earth. Have you seen those scientists trying to say, oh, this is a, the earth is this and this uh, size and this? No, <laughs> the Bible says these measurements are not known. They are not even known. Are you, are you getting the point? 3845, okay. Yes. Those measurements are not even known. Look at this, Job 38 verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? This is God asking Job. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Who has laid the measures thereof? If you know, do you know how, how the measurements of the earth are like? Or who has stretched the line upon it? Is there anyone who has gone and stretched a line over the earth and measured and said all those kind of things that they try to say? That, oh, this is the size of the earth, is this and this, 666 and thousands and what? All those kind of nonsense that they try to tell us. The Bible says, who has laid the, measure, the measures thereof? If you know, tell me. Tell me, Job, who? Who has stretched the line upon the earth? To confirm these are the sizes. Who? Job 38 verse 18. Job 38 verse 18. It says, Has thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare if you know it. Do you perceive the breath of the earth? Come on, declare it. That's what I can ask these scientists. Please declare. Declare if you know. Tell us. Let us know. Do you know? Show you another verse. Jeremiah 31, 37. Thus says the Lord, If heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast all the seed of Israel for all they have done, says the Lord. He says, If, if anyone can measure, then uh, I, I'll just, I, I, will, I, will, <laughs> I will cast off all the seed of Israel. For all they have done. Because nobody can measure. If you're saying you can measure then it means God did nothing. God is not wise as he says. Then I will cast Israel out. I mean even Israel was not even chosen. How are you trying to tell me you can measure the earth? How now? It's like God is saying, you mean you, you want to tell me that you can measure the earth? How are you going to measure it? Do you have the power? Do you have the capacity? Do you have the capacity? Let me show you another verse here. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. 
Look at that verse. The heaven for height. So if you've gone to the heaven, then uh, you know the height. So are you God? Have you, have you, have you reached to heaven and uh, put a tape measure from earth to heaven to measure? Or are you just making some speculations led by the, the devil and telling you that 666,000 blah, 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 what they try to tell you? The heaven is the height and the earth is the depth. Remember, the earth has a very deep depth. Who went to the great deep to calculate? Who went here to the great deep? Who went here to this, inside these waters, inside, down to the pillars of the earth to calculate? Who went there and measured? And the heart of kings is unsearchable. The Bible says you can't search the heart of kings. You can't. Okay. Having said that, let's come to... Uh, we have been able to see uh now I'm 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 thinking of where to go. Let me let me let me go this way and then I'll come this way. Okay. The earth is a disc, a circle is not a ball. The earth is a disc, you know, a disc like this. It's not a ball. It's not a ball. Alright. Let's check Isaiah 40 verse 22. Isaiah 40, 22. All right. The Bible says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Now let's look at this verse. It says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. God is sitting here, high up here. Upon the circle of the earth. Uh huh. Let's see. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. When God is sitting here, He sees us here like grasshoppers. We are very small here. He's sitting up here. So if uh, he's looking down and seeing us here, then uh, think about the circle kind of earth that they try to say. Do you mean now God is this side, this side, this side, this side, this side? So where is he looking us from? Which side? From which side of the sphere, sphere if they to say that? God is up here and is looking down upon the whole earth. That stretches out the heavens as a curtain. You see? The heavens like a curtain. Like this. You see, it's like a curtain, the heavens, making some sense? And spread at them as a tent to dwell in. Does this not look like a twin tent? Like a tent where we're living in, in a tent? Oh man, if that, this doesn't open your eyes, then I don't know what will. Let's keep on checking Job 38, 13 uh, to 14. All right. Look at this. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. You see? The world stands like a garment, like I've shown you in that shape. That might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Satan! Is that wicked? To be shaken out. Taken out. He is he, not supposed to be here. Satan is, is in outside. Outside. But now people try to invite him through spells and through things and through all those kind of witchcraft that people try to do. That's what invites him. Alright? Now let's look at uh, the earth measured with a line. Not a curve. I'm not saying... Anyone can measure, but I'm saying if you need to measure something in the earth, in the earth, you need to measure it with a line, not with a curve. Okay? You need to measure it with a line, not with a curve. Alright. Let's see. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Who has laid the measure thereof, if you know it? Or who has stretched the line? Are you seeing? Upon it. So you have to stretch a line from one end to another end if you really want to 
measure it, put a line here to a line here. It's not a curve like they try to tell us in a sphere. There's a line to a line. Woo, making some sense. Hey, I got a lot to tell you here. I have a lot to tell you, my brothers and my sisters. Now, a plane, okay, a plane can't exist on a ball. Only a flat level surface of which Jesus stood upon. A plane. All right? Think about this. What is a plane? I'm going to tell you. Think about this. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him to be healed of their diseases. A plain. A plain. You know, a plain is a flat place. A flat place. Let's, let's just check very well here. I, I, I don't want to tell you my own things and you say, oh, Keith, you're making uh, stories. Oh, that's not plain, blah, blah, blah. The plain, okay. G3977, let's see what a plain means. All right. A level, a plain, something leveled, something leveled. Are you seeing this one? Something leveled. That's what a plane is, according to the Bible. Hmm. Making some sense now? Okay. Now, look at this. Paths are straight and they are not curved. The paths, ways, different ways, they are straight and they are not curved. Okay. Let's look at Samuel. 1 Samuel 6, 12. 1 Samuel 6, 12. This is really interesting. I'm really enjoying this teaching. And the nine, and the kind took the straight way to the way of Beth Shemesh and went along the highway, lowing as they went and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And the Lord, lords of the Philistines were after them unto the border of Beth Shemesh. You see, the kind took the straight way Going straight from one angle to another. He went from pop to this side. Sh straight. Absolutely. Did he say that he was turning or changing? No. No. Absolutely not. So paths are straight. The Bible tells us the paths are straight. Let me show you another one here. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Why is it not carved before my face? It is straight before my face because that's exactly how it is like. All right? Psalms 27 verse 11. Psalms 27 um, verse 11 Teach me thy way, O Lord And lead me in plain path Because of my enemies Plain path We are just We have just seen the word plain What it means We have just seen about that All right. So you understand Isaiah 40 verse 3 Isaiah 40 verse 3 Okay if you're enjoying this video, please, you can give it uh, a thumbs up. And also you can uh, give us your comment and what you think. Let's, let's keep on checking. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight, straight in the desert, a highway for, uh, for our God. Straight. Are you seeing straight? Jeremiah 31 verse 9. Jeremiah 31 verse 9. Alright. They shall come with weeping and with supplications. I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way. 
wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Okay, Matthew 3.3. 3. Matthew 3.3. 3. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the Bible says here. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Paths straight. Mark 1 3. Mark 1 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Making some sense? The paths are straight, not curved. Luke. Mm -hmm. Luke 3, 4. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make its paths what? Straight. Again, are you seeing this? John 1, 23. John 1, 23. Make its path straight. This is really awesome. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as you say the prophet Isaiah. Now, why is, why is this being insisted? Because God wants us to know something. He wants us to know something. He wants us to know that things are flat. They are flat out there. Therefore, losing from Troas, we came with, with a straight course to Samothasia and the next day to Neapolis. Are you seeing this one? It's talking about we went straight, straight from one angle to another. Acts 21 verse 1. Acts 21 verse 1. It says, and it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and he had launched, we came with a straight course unto Kus, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patara. Straight, straight course. Mm -hmm. And Hebrews 12 verse 13. Hebrews 12 13. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Straight paths. Now, you've heard about uh, the earth being straight, okay? The earth being straight. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, because I have so many verses here, I cannot read all of them. I'm going to read the, the few, the few uh, areas where we have a few verses and then the ones which have many I'll just read uh, random two three four something like that all right so just hold on with me now something else waters are straight and they are not curved waters they are straight and they are not curved think about this Le they, they always tell us that uh, you see water is curving in the ocean it doesn't curve in the ocean it doesn't. By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Straightened. The waters are straightened. Okay? Is that making some sense? I'll do random. I'll do random uh, uh, checking of the verses so that we, we don't take a lot of time. Earthquakes shake earth and does not move. Earthquakes shake earth and the earth does not move. Okay? Have you heard about earthquakes which are shaking, but the earth is not even moving one inch? That's how powerful God is. Then the earth shook and trembled, and the foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. Alright? Are you seeing this one? The, the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. This is when God himself, he decides. But if he's any other way, unless God himself, nothing can move. Alright? Isaiah 13 verse 13. Look at this. Therefore I will shake the heaven, and the earth shall remove her, shall remove 
out of a place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. That day is coming. Right now, it doesn't happen. It does not move because it's stable. But there is going to be a day when this will happen. So this one is a proof that nothing moves from his place. But when God will decide on that fateful day, God will move everything. Actually, the Bible says that the... Uh, the, the earth will be rolled like a, like, a, like, a, like a book, something like that. Okay? The earth will be rolled. Let's check. Revelation 6, 12 to 13. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. You see? And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, and even as a fig tree cast as the untimely figs, when she's shaken of a mighty wind. Yes! And look at this verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll. This is what I was just talking about. When it rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. This is on that great day when it will happen. But right now, it's not happening. It's not happening. There's no earthquake which is moving anything right now. Okay. The earth is fixed and is immovable. Okay. I, I, I believe I had told you about the earth being fixed and immovable. That's what we started. All right. We started with. So I'm not going to read this. Now, the Bible tells us that uh, be still and know that I am God. Why still? Because everything that God has created... It's still Psalms 46 verse 10. I don't need to read that. It's already quoted here. All right. So now let's continue. Let's keep on checking. We have read about that. Now let's see concerning, uh, let's see concerning what? The high altitude perspectives. Okay. The high altitudes perspectives. Let's read this. See, the whole science is in the Bible. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of the Bible. You can be able to know everything. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof unto the ends, end of all the earth. Now, how can a tree, which is here in the middle of the earth, be able to be seen by everyone on the earth? It means that tree, it's on, it's on a flat earth. That's why you can see it from here, you can see it from here, you can see it from here, you can see it from everywhere because that tree reached up to the heavens. It was a big tree. So everybody could see it. How can you see it on a sphere? You can't. Daniel 4.20 Daniel 4.20 Daniel 4.20 See what the Bible says. The tree that thou sowest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof unto all the earth. Everybody in the earth saw that, that tree. Matthew 4, 8. Matthew 4, 8. Matthew 4, 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. This is when Satan wanted to tempt Jesus. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. How can you show all the kingdoms of the world if you're not on a flat earth? How can you? It's not possible. Now, think about this time when everybody will see Jesus. How will everybody see Jesus at the same time? How will everybody see Jesus at the same time? <laughs> Look at this. It means it will be on a flat earth. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now, how will they, everybody here on earth see Jesus coming down? Because Jesus will come from up here. And it's on a flat earth, so we will all see him coming down. Every eye will see him. And Satan wants to say, we are on a sphere that, oh, oh, every eye will see him. How now? Will he divide himself? Blah, 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 what they try to say. No, every eye will see him. New Jerusalem, the huge cube. Mm -hmm. The New Jerusalem, let's look at this huge cube. 
which is called the New Jerusalem, which will coming down, coming down from heaven. Mm -hmm. And he, and he talked with me, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square. You see, and the length is as large as the breadth, and the mes uh, measured city with the reed. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. That's a cube. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man. That is, of the angel. You see, the new Jerusalem, it will be coming down. How will it come down and where? From heaven. It will go here. And do you know something really funny? That uh, 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 Israel is at the middle of the earth. Israel is actually the middle of the earth. <laughs> Go and do your math. Go do your math. Israel is the middle of the earth. That is where exactly Jesus is going to rule from. It's at the middle of the earth. And that's where exactly that tree of life will be. It's where all the things will be at, here at Israel, in Jerusalem. That's the middle of the earth. You see how Jesus is so, so precise with these same things? He puts everything exactly the way it's supposed to be. Aha. Uh -huh. Great. Now let's look at the... Let's look at the breath spread out flat of the earth. The breath. All right. Uh, here I'll just sample some of them I'd read for you, but let me uh, let me just put this. This is really an amazing understanding. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The breadth of the earth, all round the earth, you see. You can read the others for yourself. Let me just uh, go hoping, hoping, so that I don't uh, take a lot of time. Voice of creation goes out in a line through all the earth. Okay? In a line throughout all the earth. The voice of creation. The voice of creation. Okay? Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Let let them has uh, hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. So when people are preaching, their words go, you know, this side, this side, this side, this side, to the ends everywhere in the earth. All right. Matthew's Bible from 1537 says a flat earth. If you check in uh, in Second Samuel. Uh, this let me let me see if I have uh, let me see if I can find this verse in Matthew's Bible right uh, Matthew's Bible all right let me see uh, if I have this all right mm. I don't know if I don't know where I can, let, let me see if Matthew's Bible. Let me try and see here if I will get this. I don't know which verse was that. Let me see Samuel, Second Samuel 11, 11. Let's see. 11 verse 11 uh, Where is it? Where is it? Is this, I don't know if it's this one But you can go and check Yes And Vriya said unto David The ark of Israel And lewed a well in Paulions And my lord Loab And the servantes of my lord Laid in tenters upon the flat earth and should I then go into my house and to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? Thy life and sure thy soul layeth. I will not do that thing. Okay, you see, the flat earth is here. 
you can see a flat earth from that verse okay you can go take your time and uh, go and read that much so there's that one showing you that there's even mention of a flat earth okay all right uh creation worshipers deuteronomy deuteronomy 419 it talks about creation worshipers they are they are what we call the the worshipers in the time of creation all right or the creation worshipers deuteronomy 419 deuteronomy 4 verse 19 it says unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars and even all the hosts of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them which the lord god has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven you see you lift your eyes unto heaven and when you see the sun and the moon so when you're lifting your eyes where are you you're here you're lifting up your eyes and you see the sun and the moon and the stars and and the heavens all right you can read the others there all right now god's word is always faithful and true this one we can we can confirm very well that what god has said is faithful and is true and nobody else can be able to say something else which is which is a against god because god is true and he said unto me these sayings are faithful and true everything that you said is faithful and is true and the lord god of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must surely be done you see so nothing is not true everything is true according to god now let's look at this the sun stops moving do you remember the sun stopped moving and show you this the verse of joshua and tell me tell me what do you see about this then i then spoke joshua unto the lord in the day when the lord delivered up the amorites before the children of israel there was war now they were fighting and he said unto the sight of israel son you see son stand thou still upon gibeon and thou moon in the valley of ajalon and the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies it is is this not written in the book of joshua so that so the sun stood still are you seeing the sun stood still in the midst of the heaven and i hasted not to go down about a whole day the sun stood still so is the sun which is moving is not the earth if the earth is moving then uh, joshua could have said the, the 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 earth stands still and there was no day like that before it or after it that the lord hearkened unto the voice of a man for the lord fought for israel making some sense go and read the others here now let me wind up uh, reading for you uh, concerning the earth has a face a geometrical flat surface we have read uh, most verses in genesis now let me just sample a couple of uh, verses here let's let's check numbers all right numbers mm -hmm. numbers 12 verse 3 now the man moses was very meek above all the men which are upon the face of the earth the earth has a face okay let's sample another one here in uh, psalms 104 verse 30 and you can just pause later on the video take a screenshot go and check uh, uh, those uh, those verses thou sendest forth thy spirit they are created and thou renewest the face of the earth are you seeing the earth as a face the earth as a face let me show you maybe one more right let's see zechariah 5 3 the face of the earth uh-huh look at this then said he unto me this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth the face of the whole earth for everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. you see the face of the earth now the earth has a face I hope you have understood there now let's look at the the firmament i think i've explained much about the firmament but uh, let me show you other verses outside genesis where you can be able to uh, understand about the firmament okay the dome 
the dome of the earth. The Bible says uh, about this dome, which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea. You see, the waves of the sea spreadeth out the heaven. You see, spreading out the heavens and the waves of the sea. Making some sense? Um, let me see another one here. Let's check on Isaiah 48 verse 13. Isaiah 48 verse 13. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. This is really... Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Making some sense? Let's read uh, Revelation 6.14. Okay, Revelation 6.14. What does it say? It says... And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Mm -hmm. Like a scroll. This scroll were taken out. Shh, you know, this scroll was taken out. And uh, I think there's another verse here which speaks something very, very good. I think I would like you to hear. Uh, I don't know if, the, if this this one, that there will be no more sea. I don't know if it's this one. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass. You see, before the throne of God, there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, and the midst of the throne, and, the, and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. You see, there was a sea of glass. This is basically a frozen sea, a frozen ocean here. It's frozen. A sea, but is of glass. Basically, this one is the same thing. A sea, but is of glass. It's frozen. Okay? It's frozen. I don't know if I have the, the verse of uh, there'll be no more sea. No, I, I don't have it here. I know it's in Revelation. Anyway, having said that, let's see. The sun moves and not the earth. The sun is the one which is moving. Let's say sample like uh, three different verses here. Let's see Numbers uh, 3415. Numbers 3415. Alright. What does it say? The two tribes and the half tribes have received their inheritance on the side of Jordan near Jericho eastward towards the sun rising. You see, the sun is the one which is rising. The sun is the one which is moving, not the earth. Let's uh, sample something else here. Uh, Judges. Judges 933. All right. What does the Bible say here? It says, uh, And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early and set upon the city. And behold, when, the, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, then may you go to them as thou find occasion. So the sun rising in the morning, so what is moving is the sun. Let's see another one more verse here. Maybe we can see uh, Ecclesiastes. All right, one five. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and check if I can uh, attach the PDF on the on the video uh, on YouTube. Eh? All right, on YouTube. Uh, you you can see that one there you can just go on youtube if you're watching from facebook or beat shoot or any other place please go on youtube and you'll see that attachment uh, god willing i'll put it there the sun also arises then the sun goes down and hasted to the place where he uh, he arose you see so it's the sun which is going now uh i think we had read about um this one i think we had read about the other's face and the sun moves I don't know if you had read about this, these two. What a half a face, a geometrical flat. Yes, th this one I think we had read also, if I'm not wrong. Sky has a face. The sky has a face. Mm -hmm. Let's just check. A geometrical flat surface. Wow. Absolutely great. Mm -hmm. Matthew 16.3. It says, and in the morning it will be fall weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. 
Oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. You see, the, the, the sky has a face. It looks, it has a look, a way it looks like, all right? And this is a reputation of the same, I believe. All right. The sun, the earth has ends, okay? For those who say the earth does not have an end, you know, you cannot see the end of the earth. No, the earth has ends. And the verses are many here. And I'll sample maybe three or four as we as we wind up, all right? Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. Deuteronomy 28, uh, 49. It says, what does it say? Let's see here. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue shall not, thou shall not understand. You see, from the ends of the earth. So it's like God is saying, I'll bring a nation something from this end to the end the other end and they will come with a tongue that you don't understand a language that you don't understand is that true countries every country has different languages that's very true let's see psalm 61 verse 2 and as to sample three two or three more verses and we are done all right mm, psalm 61 verse 2 it says from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I you see from the end of the earth that's David saying this uh, two more let's see Isaiah 45 22 Isaiah 45 22 what does it say it says uh, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else you see, God is saying, all of you, all of you here, from one end to the other end, from one end to the other end, please look up. There's no other God. And uh, let's look at Micah 5 verse 4. Micah 5 verse 4. Mm, it says, and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of his name of the Lord is God, and they shall abide now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth now has this made some sense to you have you been able to understand what uh, you can just go also to flat earth doctrine.com you can be able to see much 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 more all right but this one already tells you that man a lot of lies are out there we need to open up our eyes and understand what the bible is telling us and uh to even help you to understand much more, you can uh, go to uh, shakingmyheadsproduction.com. These are one of the guys who really, really speak a lot of things concerning. And they have videos, okay? They have different videos on, on the flat earth and stuff like that. Please go and check. They have a lot of information. And there's this video i like you to go and watch. It's called Under the Dome on uh, shakingmyheadproductions.com. All right, please go and check them out. This, this, this is a brother. This is a brother who really does incredible videos, and he also has a channel on YouTube also. Although his channel has been, uh, he's been pu pulled down over and over because, uh, you know, <laughs> these people don't want to hear the truth. Just go and see, and there are so many videos which can tell you a lot, a lot, a lot about the Bible, the truth, and what's really happening in the world. Let's let's open up our eyes. Let's not just be, you know, uh, people who are asleep. Let's not be those kind of Christians who just, uh, they, 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 they just move and they, they don't use faith. They don't use discernment. They don't understand what's going on. Let's, let's be wise. Let's be wise. Okay. Let's be wise and let's open up our eyes. And if you're still out there and you're not saved, you're still not uh, a believer, please be saved. Because uh, the Bible says without being saved, you cannot enter the kingdom of God without being born again. You see, the Bible says you have to be born again because, number one, you are born into this world. And this world is, a, uh, is evil. You're already born in sin because Adam, your father, was born in sin. And uh, you're just adding sin unto sin, sin unto sin, sin unto sin. So unless you're born again in the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. All right. So you have to be born of the spirit. And how can you be born of the spirit? Is by believing in Jesus Christ. You have to understand that Jesus came and became man so that he died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He did this so that you can be saved. 
And once you're saved, things like this will not be a big deal for you. You'll understand, you will learn, and you'll come to the knowledge of the truth and follow the Bible because that's where the truth is. All these other people, they're just cartoons, they're just movie actors. All these are just uh, things shot in basements and you see that they're just a bunch of liars. All right, they're just a bunch of lies. The truth is found in the Bible. The Bible tells us how to live or how the earth looks like, how to live with our wives, with our children, how to do business, how to do... Basically, the Bible has the whole truth. But right now, we are relying so much on uh, on another truth, which is called, uh, you know, the, the, the artificial truth. That's what people want, but they don't want the truth of the gospel. You have to understand and believe the gospel. Because once you believe the gospel and you're saved, then everything else God is going to teach you out. All right? He's going to teach you. You see, even, even the UN logo used to be a flat earth. A flat earth logo but of course the people don't see they just it's just truth hidden in plain sight and things like that but people just uh, uh, would rather uh, enjoy being called monkeys than uh, I, I, I don't really understand why would you enjoy being called a monkey and you say yes I'm really a monkey on a spinning ball but come on guys let's let's be wise let's open up our eyes and uh, let's learn the truth the truth of the gospel because only the truth will set us free be saved be saved jesus died for your sins he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures you have to believe that be saved and and uh, you're saved still and sanctified unto the day of redemption once you believe that my friends you have nothing else to worry Hope this video has been a blessing to you. Hope uh, you've been able to learn something. If you enjoyed these uh, videos, please uh, give them a like. Also, you can share to your friends and let them hear also the gospel. And check it out uh, at the description below. We have a couple of other channels outside YouTube where you can go and see what we also post on uh, BitChute, on, uh, uh, on Facebook and, and things like that. And also share to your friends. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed time.